order. This is a joint meeting of the school committee and the board of selectmen. We need another and, select board. Um, Andy Friedman and I uh, conferred about how we would uh, run the meeting. So um, before I sort of go over the, how we're going to do that, um, and we will be turning the meeting, uh, the running of the meeting over to Dr. Darty, who is the school committee's not only chief executive officer, he is also our secretary. I'm going to turn it over to him so that Andy and I can uh, focus on um, the matter at hand. But before I do that, we have one item that we uh, added to the agenda as a result of the snowstorm and cancellation of the Board of Selectmen's, the Select Board's meeting uh, last night. Um, we have an item that we would like to honor this evening, and so I'd like to invite uh, Amelia Borowski up. Um, she has something to tell us. I just have to quickly say, oh. call the, uh, the Select Board to order. <coughs> Thanks, Elaine. Great, thank you. Hi, my name is Amelia Borowski. I'm a fifth grade student council representative from Barrows Elementary School. This year, the student council decided to celebrate Valentine's Day by spreading love and appreciation around town to thank all the people who make Reading special. I'm here to present everyone who works at Town Hall with handmade Valentine's cards from Barrow students to thank you for making our town a safe, clean place to live. Excellent, Amelia. Thank you. Looks like quite a pile of Valentines yes. there. Huh? <laughs> no, I, yeah, I'm all set for my wife now. Uh, <laughs> I know that um, <laughs> town manager Bob Lelisher could not be here this evening, and he was um, he knew that this was going to be happening, and is extremely appreciative. And I'm sure all those Valentines are going to get handed out yeah. tomorrow at town hall. So that's awesome, and we really appreciate the Barrows community. Uh, reaching out in the way that they did and really setting a tone of appreciation and thankfulness. So that's great. Okay, so we are here this evening. I'm sure uh, Mr. Berman is going to be, well, should be joining us very shortly. And I know Mr. Engsbinger, we knew, was going to be a little bit later. Um, so the process when there's an opening on uh, any of the committees, it's a process that is executed jointly by the boards. And um, Dr. Darty is going to go over some of the details. Oh, here's Mr. Berman. And um, basically what we're going to do this evening is the candidates, there's three candidates before us for the uh, appointment on the school committee, which um, officially on our calendar we have one school committee meeting before the election. So whoever is appointed to this meeting will serve on the school committee between now and then. Um, we do have a posted meeting with the FinCom to present our budget. Um, and the school committee meeting. So uh, that whoever is selected this evening will join us in, in those endeavors. The way that the process is going to work is the candidates will uh, be given an opportunity to give a two-minute opening. Then the members of these two committees will be, um, if at their option, permitted to ask uh, each candidate uh, one question. I'd like to make sure that all of us keep our questions to a question, one sentence. I timed myself. 15 seconds is actually a very meaty question. So if we can do that, that would be uh, very helpful. And uh, we'll try to give each candidate approximately about 15 minutes. And then in, when we have uh, finished that, uh, each candidate will have an opportunity to give a one-minute closing. And then this is a roll call vote. So, and doc, Dr. Darty will will um, manage that process first and um, hand that over. So I am officially going to hand the gavel to Dr. Darty because he's going to, I don't have to? I don't All right. to <laughs> I'm going to ask Dr. Darty to be our secretary. This does allow us to focus on the meeting. So. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So I don't have to go over the process because you just did. Well. <laughs> so uh, this evening we have three candidates uh, and they're in your packet. Uh, their um, information. We have uh, Jeffrey Corm, Gina Healy, and Tom Wise, and we are going to have each candidate come up in alphabetical order, so we'll have uh, Jeffrey Corm come up first. And as he's coming up, as, as Mrs. Webb said, uh, Jeffrey will be allowed a, about a two-minute introduction, and then each uh, member of either the select board or the school committee will have the opportunity to ask uh, one question we're hoping each candidate will have about 15 minutes uh, total for the for the interview process. 
So, Mr. Quorum. Thank you, Dr. Doherty. Thank you, uh, Chairman Friedman, Chairperson Webb, and members of the School Committee and, and uh, Select Board. Um, I guess I, I applied because I was present at the School Committee meeting uh, when this temporary vacancy was discussed. I heard some concerns that the person appointed would, be, would need to get up to speed quickly on the budget and other school committee business, and I felt that really any of the budget parents who were there in that room that night would have been well informed uh, on the budget side for the upcoming meeting, as Ms. Webb mentioned, with FinCom, uh, and I would be happy to serve the town in this capacity. As I listed on my application, I've been a budget parent a couple, four times over the years, and I also served as treasurer of the Yes for Reading override campaigns both times, so I have additional understanding of the town side of the budget. Uh, so if you would like me to, to help you out in this interim time, I, I would be happy to, to do that for you. Great. Thank you. You may want to, yeah, because yeah, anybody asking questions. Sure. Um, we'll st what we'll do is we'll alternate between school committee and select board. So, Mrs. Webb, if you'd like to begin. Uh, Mr. Coram, I'm just sort of interested in terms of where, where your motivation to be a part of public education comes from. Um, I was a public school student myself. Uh, both my daughters are here at Reading High School um, and have gotten great educations, and I'd like to continue to see Reading Public Schools make strides forward and increase the educational opportunities for its students. Thank you. Mr. Friedman? Um, you answered my question in your introduction, so I will cede uh, my time to the um, either one of the other select board members. Okay. okay. Uh, Dr. Doxer? I'm just gonna go, go ahead. Okay. No, no <laughs> questions? Okay. Um, he's going to choose everyone. We're just gonna we're gonna alternate. Did yeah. you catch that? <laughs> um, one of the challenges that was discussed is coming up to speed, in order to um, be a part of this the school committee for such a short time and so quickly. Um, and one of the meetings, as Mrs. Webb said, is the budget meeting that's coming up. So I was just wondering how <coughs> you would feel representing a budget that you didn't actually get to vote on at the um, FinCom meeting. So certainly I, I would expect that I'm not the only school committee member at that meeting um, and that I would defer to them on most questions, but if I could add a little bit of, of uh, color to the description um, based on my experience with my children here at the high school, and I would be happy to, to weigh in on that or some historical perspective based on the four years of budget parent. Salvarado? Thank you. Um, what would you expect your contributions to be as a member of the school committee over the course of the next six weeks? <clears throat> I really wouldn't expect much of a contribution over one, one and a half meetings um, in this particular instance. Mostly I was looking to if the, uh, if the boards felt that you needed to seat someone based on the bylaws, then I felt that I was a, a qualified candidate to help you fill that gap. Thank you. Mr. Robinson? <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Dr. Doxer got some of my question, but uh, my question is, uh, I guess, more pointed. Uh, do you have any concerns with the, the budget that's being presented to the Finance Committee? Um, no particular concerns with the budget this year. Certainly, the concerns that we have for the budget going forward as to, you know, special ed um, cost increases continuing and where that trajectory goes and how the town expects to look at that um, accommodated costs or, or whatever that would help us manage that into the future. Thank you. Mr. Berman. Thank you. Um, before I ask my question, I just um, wanted to um, I know as a, as a select board, um, the reason why we're here is that um, we're replacing Sherry Vandenacker who had to step down because of the death of her father. And I don't think that we as a board sort of expressed our condolences and her thanks mm. for her service. I think she was a brief time a voice of teaching and learning in the district. And, and I know a lot of people will miss her. So um, I just wanted to kind of get that out there sort of officially from the select board. I know I speak for my colleagues when I, when I say that. So um, Jeffrey, I've seen you at more school committee meetings then probably you've probably been there as many as, as as some of the school committee members themselves have you ever um 
consider, did you consider this time or will you consider in the future actually running and being a, an elected person of the school committee? I, I will consider that in the future. Um, I have a senior and a sophomore and having gone through the senior year, you know, end of junior year, senior year with my senior, I'm looking ahead to next year this time and I am foreseeing a very busy time with that and I felt it was not a good time for me to run for the school committee mm -hmm. position uh, this year. But you wouldn't rule it out in the future? I, I would certainly consider it um, in the future. Mr. Guavin? Yeah, uh, Jeffrey, first of all, thank you. You are a familiar presence at school committee meetings and uh, we appreciate you participating in this process as a, as a candidate <coughs> tonight. My question for, for you is, could you identify a quality about yourself that you feel would be important um, as a member of the committee on a temporary basis and, and give us an example of when you demonstrated that quality? Uh, so one particular issue that I have is I, I have a intense um, attention to details, which was actually part of the reason they asked me to be the treasurer of the Birch Meadow PTO years ago before they had actually filed their 501c3 uh, application. I pushed that all the way through following you know, all the rules and, and making sure that would go through. And there were a couple things in the, in the budget book. I, there was a gentleman um, who used to nitpick some of, well, who used to be very concerned about some of the grammar and in there, um, I think he uh, passed away recently. But I think, you know, in, in this short time, I might have a, a pass through the budget book and, and change a couple of commas here and a fewer to a less <coughs> um, in one instance. So in a short time, I think that might be something I could accomplish. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Halsey? Well, you guys did a good job. <laughs> All the questions I had in my head have been asked. So, Jeffrey, thanks for your offer to help. and. I've had all my questions answered, thank you. And Ms. Borowski. Um, Mr. Blavin virtually took mine. I would accuse <laughs> you of looking at my paper, but you're way over there. Um, but I'm gonna ask it a little bit more broadly because I think it was a very good question. Um, you are familiar with President School Committee, so do you see any particular quality of how the, the committee functions that you would wanna emulate and continue? Or anything that you say, boy, if I were part of that committee, I would suggest you know a change in either process or quality in some way. I guess I'm not sure that in one meeting I'd <laughs> I'd hope to make a significant change to to the operation. Fair enough. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to make a concluding remark, I, that's all right. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. I'd like to have now Gina Healy come up. <coughs> Gina, if you'd like to make a short introduction. Sure. Hi, my name is Gina Healy. I thank you for this opportunity. Uh, when I learned that there was this opening, uh, I thought this is an opportunity for me to share my expertise and experience. I'm an, a career educator. I launched my career here in uh, at Reading High School. I learned tonight that Mrs. Webb was one of my former students. <laughs> and um, that um, um, this is a community that I have loved, that my kids have grown up in. The schools have served me and my children very well. And I felt that I had something that I could offer uh, to you in the form of um, my expertise as teacher, uh, principal, and assistant superintendent, which is uh, the position I retired from in New York. Um, I am not, I have not been involved in politics in uh, local politics, but I have been involved in um, local community organizations. Um, uh, I should explain that my uh, family lived in Reading for almost 30 years. My husband took a job in New York um, about 10 years ago, 12 years ago now, and we moved to New York, and um, so we've been, we were away from the community, but when we decided that we wanted to come back to Massachusetts, we were very clear that we wanted to come back to Reading, and so a year and a half ago, we did move back to the community. Um, so in my former life, a long time ago, when, when we were here 10 years ago, I, um, I served mostly um, on, uh, in, served the community mostly through um, my service in St. Agnes Church. I was on the music ministry there. Uh, CCD teacher for many years, um, and then also was involved in the schools and the activities that my kids were involved in, um, particularly as a sports parent um, and an advocate for, um, for what was happening in the schools at that time. 
um, since we've returned, I've been more focused on service and community. I joined the Lions Club um, a year and a half ago when I first came back and have been happy to um, make a co contribution to the Reading community in that capacity. Um, I also um, belong to the Reading Community Singers and serve on that board and um, also ran the scholarship program for, um, for the Reading Community Singers this year and I'm happy to say that for the first time in many years we're going to be um, awarding that scholarship to a Reading High School senior uh, this year and um, I'm also involved in the Reading um, Neighborhood Network which is a group um, of older residents in the community who are trying to um, find ways to um, stay in their homes as they age um, with the support of a network of volunteers and I belong to that group. Um, my um, expertise as you've seen on my resume I've been a teacher um, as I said launched my career here and um, a principal um, assistant superintendent and assistant superintendent both in New York and in Massachusetts, so I have an ex experience with um, any number of education concerns um, and the problems that face um, schools everywhere, which um, are quite universal, actually, having worked now in two states and, um, and a variety of communities. Thank you. Thank you. And Mrs. Webb, you get to ask your former teacher the first question. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask the same question. Actually, I'm interested in your motivation for serving public education in Reading, in our community. Sure. So I really believe that um, the future is the, is our education is the future. It is um, what levels the playing field for us. It's part of our democratic, it's part of the fabric of a democratic society. I have very strong feelings about um, public education. Um, as um, and, and I'm very mission driven in, in that. I believe that um, the most important thing that can happen in schools is to have a qualified, highly qualified teacher and highly qualified principal in the school, in the classroom. And I think that, um, that the school board needs to balance the needs of the, of the taxpayers, but also um, provide the most outstanding educational opportunities that can be provided. Um, that's really what we're, we're about, and that's what I want for my children. That's what I want for your children. Um, and um, as I said, my children were very well served by the Reading Public Schools. Uh, my sons graduated in 2003 and 2005. Um, one of them went on to Brown University, the other um, to Bryant, and both are successful, um, one living locally and working locally, the other in New York. Um, so um, I think that we need to give back and when I saw that this, I saw this opportunity, I thought, okay, this is something that I know, that I love, that I can do, and that I can give back to the community. Thank you. Mr. Friedman. Um, first of all, very impressive resume. Thank you. Um, my, I guess my question is, this is gonna be, this appointment will be for a very brief yes. period. So um, how, much have you stayed on top of the current issues that the, the board in, is dealing with? So I don't, I, I have to say that I've not been part of the finance committee or the budget. Um, I do, I was following the kindergarten um, issue of some of the questions that come up in the paper, so I am aware of those. Um, and so I, you know, that's, that's the level of, um, of understanding that I have of the specifics. But what I have to say is that um, many of the questions, how to balance special education costs and regular education um, are really universal. It, it, for example, is a universal question. Um, how to have a budget, I'm, I was very happy to, about the override and um, you know, how to, but, but how to balance the needs of taxpayers and also how to fund schools is really um, a very difficult problem. And that's a problem that's facing schools, not just in Massachusetts, but in other, in other uh, places. So um, I, see, I feel that, um, that I may not know the, the intimate details of what's going on. I certainly have the background knowledge to be able to read it and understand it and get up to speed quickly. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Dr. Doxick. 
I thank you so much for being here and I'm excited about your expertise and um, I'd love to think that you'll stay involved now too, yeah. regardless of what happens today. Sure. Um, my question is the same as before. Um, it's a challenging situation to go in as a new school committee member to a meeting with the FinCom to talk about our budget and um, since you were one of the school committee members that voted on it, I'm just wondering how you will um, approach that. Okay, so on the administrative side, I will say that um, we've always had to support a budget, not necessarily a budget that was the budget that we loved, but the, the budget that we had. And um, I think that that's the, the way I would approach this, that these are, you know, I, I'm a team player, I'm a collaborator, and um, if, this, if the school board and, has, and the FinCom have decided on a particular budget, then that's what I need to get behind and support, um, do the research to make it the best possible situation, but, um, but to support that. And I would be comfortable doing that. This is Alvarado. Um, thank you. Uh, my question is the same. What do you expect your contributions to be um, to the school committee over the course of the six weeks that the ter term is so, for? One of the things that I have going for me is that I am retired at this time, and I'm a retired educator, so I do have time. Um, I know that there is a lot of uh, research that goes into um, a lots of decisions, and um, would be happy to do the legwork for the for the committee um, that needed to be done for preparation uh, for whatever the the question or the conversation was going to be. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Robinson. Dr. Doxer came into mind again, but uh, I really don't have a, a, I think that answered my budget question, but I just wanted to, you know, I, I really applaud uh, all of your uh, acti community activity and you've only been back, what, a couple years or something? A year and a half, yeah. That's, that's uh, you know, hopefully as to the uh, someone's earlier point, if you don't uh, get selected tonight that you stay involved. Thank you for that. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Ensminger. Thank you. Would you like to ask a question? Uh, not at this time. Okay. Mr. Blavin? Oh, Ms. Healy, I'll leave my last question for someone else to ask if you'd like. So I'll ask a different one. So this is one I can only ask you. Okay. Um, you've been a principal for seven years. You've been an assistant superintendent for three years. Um, what has been your interaction in those administrative roles with uh, school committees, and what have you learned from those interactions that you think might help us do our job better? Well, um, I had, I've had wonderful interactions with um, school committees, not just as an administrator, but um, I was um, on the negotiating team. I represented the, the um, administrator's union um, in the negotiations in, when I was in Newton, um, and I was also on a joint oversight committee um, for the con contract negotiations. Um, so I've sat on both sides of the table in terms of contract negotiations because as an assistant superintendent, I was negotiating with teachers um, for, their, for their contracts. So, um, and, and working with the school board in, in those capacities. So I think that um, in Newton, we had a very collaborative process um, and that, uh, and that was a, um, a very positive um, experience and, um, and I, one that we replicated also when I was in, um, in Bedford, uh, New York. Um, I have, um, I, as I said, I attended the regular um, school board meetings in New York as the administrator presenting the personnel um, part of the budget, uh, part of the uh, agenda and, uh, and budget as well. Um, and so uh, had developed a, a, a good working relationship. I think openness, candor um, are really the keys to, um, to and, and collaboration. I think that we're, we are not serving uh, cross purposes. We are here for the same reason. We're here for students and to, um, to provide the best opportunities that we can for students. And I think that in remembering what our mission is, um, is it really important. Mr. Halsey. Well, again, these questions are, you know, my friends over here are good at getting to the point. 
and they have done a good job. But I'd just like to say to you that uh, you've had a career certainly extremely well spent um, and a lot to be proud of. And I want to especially thank you um, for your return to writing and your return to being an active citizen. Um, I really applaud what you're doing in helping seniors to stay in their homes. It's not an easy thing to do. Almost seems like cross purposes when we spend money and raise taxes and then have seniors struggling. But it's great to know that somebody with your background is working hard you know, with seniors in this town. I want to thank you for that. And thank you for your application here as well. Thank you. Mrs. Borowski. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Blavin. <laughs> um, so you clearly have a lot of experience working on a variety of different kinds of boards um, and a very deep and impressive resume. So my question is, from that experience, are there any qualities that you see as particularly valuable and important to bring to board work or committee work? I think the most important thing is to be able to listen carefully um, and to be respectful of other people's opinions. But I think only in, in truly listening um, do you really understand somebody else's perspective and point of view. Thank you. And Mr. Berman. Thank you. Um, also, incredible resume. And, and thank you for moving back to Reading from New York. You could have gone anywhere you came here. So, um, we're appreciative of thank that. You. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked um, Mr. Quorum. Um, you've applied for this, but you chose not to pull papers to actually run for the position. Do you see yourself at any time actually um, becoming a candidate for the school committee? So I don't think of myself as a particularly political person, and so um, uh, that's, you know, I, uh, so, so initially I think, I thought no, um, but the more I've thought about it, th this is a way to serve um, the community, and um, it is a way for, uh, for me to share my expertise. Right now I uh, supervise student teachers um, through Bridgewater State University, and I'm enjoying that very much um, because I don't want to uh, give up everything about education. It's still very important to me. Um, but, uh, but this is another way to be able to serve both the community and the children of that community and to share um, my lifelong expertise. Thank you. Would you like to make any concluding remarks? Well, I just thank you for this opportunity, and I really appreciate the questions that you've asked. I think they're very thoughtful, um, and um, I look forward to uh, perhaps um, serving with you, And but if not, um, then um, I will be supportive of all of the things that you do for the schools. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Our last candidate this evening is uh, Tom Wise. I find it hard coming to this lectern because I'm too tall for it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. Um, as you can see in front of you, I've prepared an applicant statement and then I'm happy to answer any questions as necessary. Um, by way of introduction, my name is Tom Wise. Um, I'm interested in this appointment because I believe I can be a productive member of the school committee, even over the short period of time the appointment covers. I believe this has been I, I, have, I believe that as I've been actively following the committee, including budget, policy, and other key topics for quite some time, as of the close of business on Tuesday, the, 20th, the 12th of February, I am the only person seeking this appointment that has also declared my intention to run for a permanent position on the committee. This further demonstrates my serious interest and commitment on taking this role. Additionally, any time spent training me for the interim school committee member position will be that much less time I need and getting up to speed should I win, not presuming should I win, a seat in the upcoming April election. With respect to my professional background, I'm currently the head of enterprise data for a large asset management firm in Boston. Historically, I've run large application development organizations and managed staff of various experience and skill levels in excess of 150 people. Managing that number of people brings about its own challenges, but I've learned the ability to manage large budgets to the penny while driving strategic change and implementing complex programs over long periods of time. Such change does not happen without detailed focus on communication to all stakeholders and execution planning. From a personal perspective, my family and I moved to Reading in the spring of 2006. 
after executing a thorough analysis of the towns north of Boston. We were looking for a strong public safety rating, options for commuting into Boston, and most of all, and probably most important, strong public schools. My children are now 11 and 13 and both attend Parker. Both started their Reading Public School experience at Joshua Eaton. The struggles that Joshua Eaton faced after the 2013-2014 school year brought about my initial engagement in trying to help our schools become stronger and provide more opportunities for growth for our children. My, my engagement began as a member of the Joshua Eaton Task Force, also known as JETF, throughout the winter of 2014 into the spring of 2015. Through that process, I was introduced to many wonderful parents and teachers <coughs> that truly had the children's best interests at heart. While in the task force, I learned many things that I believe will be helpful in my role as school committee member. Some examples, but not limited to these, are building an understanding of how professional learning communities work throughout the teacher community, both across grades and across schools. Learning how teachers and administrators use both standardized testing data and district determined measures to assess students for growth, learning gaps, and provide early interventions. Through my participation in Josh Wheaton's World Cafe, including helping facilitating community discussion groups, devising topics, and analyzing the resulting data, I gained significant pardon me, uh, insight into the perceptions of both the parent and teacher constituent bases with respect to Josh Wheaton and the Reading Public Schools as a whole. Unfortunately, that process ended rather abruptly, and the task force was not able to bring about the change for which we were charged. At the time, I highly considered running for school committee, but had too many other commitments that would have prevented me from being productive in that role. Some of those other commitments and volunteer activities include, I was working with the town at the time, with both with the <coughs> Board of Selectmen, as it was then called, now Select Board, the Community Planning and Development Commission, the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Conservation Commission, and the Ad Hoc Zoning Advisory <coughs> Committee to enable my family to build an addition to our house so that our in-laws could move in with us. The age, age in place has been very near and dear to my heart. Um, I've also been a very active coach and coordinator for Reading United Soccer Club for the last seven plus years, give or take. <coughs> I've coached Little League Baseball. I've been a town meeting member. So I've been very active in this community. Over the last several years, due to my participation on the JETF and as a result of my roles as coach and coordinator for Rusk, I've had the pleasure of meeting more and more members of our school, school community. I've heard stories of success and stories of struggle. I've, had, I've seen pockets of improvement and pockets of regression. Personally, while I do, I do have one child on, on an individualized education plan, my family has been blessed with generally positive experiences, and my wife and I are believers in public education. Both of us are products of it. However, due to what I hear from other families and my belief in public schools in general, I feel compelled to stand up and try to help improve our own schools as we go forward. To do so, I've recently rolled back my time commitment for Rusk to free up more time for school-related tasks. While historically I've watched many school committees from home, I've attended every budget meeting and regular school committee meeting throughout January and February of this year. It was good to see the override money used in alignment with what was requested. However, in looking forward, there are still many financial challenges facing the school district. I'd like to be part of the collaborative effort to help with those challenges, prioritize the funding we need, and assist with the execution. My professional background can assist me in this process. I'm regularly faced with trade-offs and strategic needs versus tactical implementations. I also regularly must review contracts with vendors to squeeze out mutually agreeable concessions and align what we need versus what we want. Frequently, this need versus want analysis is, is assisted by detailed data analysis of usage, forecasted future desires, and understanding the competitive landscape with which we work. In many cases, these negotiations have led to significant savings for our firm with limited impact on our ability to execute. I expect to be able to bring these skills to bear as we work through and proactively address the challenges facing Reading Public Schools in the next few years, or in the next six weeks, as the case may be. Finally, as previously mentioned, I'm the only candidate for this appointment that has declared an intention of running for a permanent position, but I'm also aware of the concerns of grandstanding that were raised in this, in this hall and also raised at the select board. While I'll not stop my campaign for the permanent seat, I am fully commit that there will be no grandstanding and my campaign will focus on putting forward my platform for positive improvements while focusing on three pillars of responsibility of the school committee, policy, financial management, and goal setting review process. Um, thank you for your consideration. Do Dr. Darty, um, can we start the questions this time in the reverse order? I've received a request, would that be okay? Can um, you call on the people in the reverse order? Sure, thank absolutely. You. <coughs> well, I know where they're going. So, Mr. Berman. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. So, um, thank you for stepping up and, and, um, and actually taking out your papers to run for a full-time seat. Um, um, if you were elected 
So I'm actually going to ask you the question, assuming you get elected, because that's the longer term process. Um, what would be your top call two priorities that you would like to see things done that may not be done uh, in the future that may not be done now, that aren't being done now? Two is, uh, is a very limiting answer. <laughs> um, just, I'll start with the first one, which I've just been discussing with quite a few people for quite some time. And I, I have to find the right balance of what legally we can do versus what we can't do. And that is special education in particular, and the way in which we as a school committee can help move and improve the relationship with parents. Um, through my, my fact that my son's on an IEP, through my JETF time, there have been a lot of parents that have confided in me in various different things. Um, there have been a lot of challenges, and some of that is legally bound from an IDEA perspective, IDEA, um, but I also think that there are ways we can make it a more proactive, more positive experience if we choose to do so. Um, and I think we can, so that would be one of the ones I would focus on primarily. Um, the second one, I think, um, and this is probably a little bit more loaded, but it is what it is, is the external communication by the body uh, to the community. Um, I've, I feel like the school committee could be more proactive in addressing things more quickly than sometimes happens currently. Um, if you, for example, I think you all probably saw what happened with North Reading Transportation just a few days ago, if you didn't. A uh, school bus driver, you know, came to this, the bus stop and the parents were there and they, no kids got off. And the school bus driver said, oops, I forgot to pick them up. And that started a big social media storm amongst some of the parents to which one of the school committee members jumped in and said, we've got this, we're looking at it, we're working with the superintendent, please don't keep panicking, we'll get a, an answer as quickly as possible. Um, that was both on the social media board and on the posting. So it's not that you're going to solve all problems all the time, but when something is brewing quickly, I think there's a more proactive way to address the problem. Thank you. Sporowski? Hi, thank you for your application. Um, so I'll ask a version of the same question. In observing the school committee, as you have, I've seen you at several of our meetings, or in other work that you've done, are there any qualities that you particularly admire and would want to emulate doing this kind of work? I mean, from an admiring perspective, you guys are extraordinarily respectful of each other and the way you run. Um, and I, I think that's, that's definitely something to be admired, and I wouldn't want to break that in any way, shape, or form. Um, but I do want to make sure I would bring slightly different than that is I think things a little differently. Um, just being a data and a numbers and a, you know, core foundational strategic guy, that's just who I am. I think things a little bit differently, so I'd probably bring a, a little bit avenue of, a little bit different avenue of questions at times, um, which would be meant with the best intentions of trying to achieve the positive goals, but may sometimes be stronger. I don't know if the right word is for that. Um, just as a means of probing and seeing if we can achieve something a little bit different. Thank you. Mr. Halsey. Yeah. Um, and as I, as I said, I do know where everybody's questions are at this point, and all of them have been asked pretty much of the other candidates. And so it would be my opportunity to ask you one, but honestly, Tom, um, your applicant statement answers the things that I would be concerned with, um, which is, you know, who you are and what your goals are, and it sounds like you've just enunciated um, to the previous two speakers those things that you are interested in accomplishing and continuing. So I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Blavin? Uh, yeah. So one thing I was noted in your, your initial application, but I'd like to learn more about, you, you, you mentioned I have experience setting policy. Can you tell us about any, or give us an example of that experience that you think would be helpful to you on the school committee? Um, great question. Um, policy is all a relative term, right? I don't have experience in setting policy as is written in our policy manuals with legal related relations. My experience in policy is with regards to data policy and usage. Um, as the head of enterprise data, my, one of my responsibilities is making sure people use the right data at the right time for the right purpose. And so in, in writing policy along those lines, it's what data should you be using, what type of key value information should you be using, 
not using the wrong information as your driving key and therefore messing up the way in which your data would relate appropriately, um, as well as things like your policy should be, data should be in a master system, not spread out all over the place. Um, you should have a central stewardship team that's responsible for it. You should understand the definition of what that data is and where it's going. Those are the type of policies that I refer to in that application. Mr. Ensminger. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tom, for putting your candidacy forward uh, for the next seven weeks and in addition to that, uh, being on the ballot for the full position. I, I put a lot of you know, weight behind your decision to do that, believe me. Uh, you mentioned uh, the need to improve communication uh, with constituents. Do you have some specific suggestions uh, for the committee to do that? Um, I do. <laughs> um, and, I, and this is where it's going to get a little bit more challenging in the execution, right? Uh, if you read through the policies that we have as a school committee, um, we have a couple of policies that say um, we are focused on providing a public service. Uh, we also have the electronic communications policy, which with open meeting law related stuff makes it seem as though no school committee member should ever engage in social, social media related stuff. Um, so my approach would be a little bit different one, which would be a proactive social media related policy, but addressing some of the things that would be potential open media law, uh, open media, blah, open meeting law related concerns. Um, in particular, um, if you don't get to quorum because you can't possibly get to quorum, then you might be able to address some of those concerns. So if you had a rotation of, say, one or two school committee members over a period of time that was the voice, you could potentially avoid an open meeting law related um, possibility. These are all ideas. Obviously, they need to be flushed out and validated whether they work or not. Um, but that's an idea in that space. If, and so. Also, by rotating, you don't end up with one voice that is the dominant voice, and one voice that is always looked at necessarily as either the right voice or the wrong voice or the, you know, whatever. But it's it allows each school committee member to do what they're willing to do for that that one month period of time, and then back back off and not have to be responsible for responding as appropriate. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Tom. Uh, so. When you make a transition from a, a parent to a, a school committee member, uh, and you're you're always going to have, uh, I mean, you're at the meetings. You see, there's there's a lot of constituencies that come in and 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 want uh, things that that we can't always do. Uh, and as a uh, member of the general public, you, it, it's you you have the ability to to weigh in on that. Uh, uh, but as a school committee member, you you probably need to carry the carry the the uh, the majority of the board or the your. How, how do you how would you deal with that? That that is a transition to have to say no uh, uh, to something uh, as opposed to just saying they should be finding a way to do it. You follow what? You know? Yeah, I follow the question completely. Um, I think it's a very similar question to the, to the business world in that regard, right? Um, you know, in my role, people want all sorts of data all the time for whatever reason they want to do it, right? Oh, they should always have access, and especially in the data world, it's access to data, access to data, access to data. But the wild, wild west assume you know, in, happens, and then you can't control anything, right? Um, so I, I think the the answer to that question, from my perspective, is a set of priorities and working down those, that set of priorities and saying, have we achieved it? Um, I use a lot of decision trees, for example, uh, in the way in which we prioritize some of the work at, at, at my company. Uh, you're not going to please all the people all the time. If you try to, you'll fail anyway, right? So how do you work your way from a logical perspective? And that's just the way my mind works, is mathematical, logical perspective down the decision tree about how you're going to work through things. And f for example, one of my first things that I would be looking at is how are we making sure, absolutely unequivocally, no, no doubt about it, sure, that we are adhering to every state and federal law we need to. That's our first thing. We want a lot of things that are best, that are best practices, but if it's not a state or federal law, right now we sh it should be below that list, in my mind. So then you, that may mean there's going to be some un, 
uh, some difficult, challenging conversations. And, you know, full day kindergarten would be one in particular that would be a conversation in that mind. And how do we achieve that given the constraints we have from a space perspective, other things like that. So that may be an unpopular position, but there may be a need to make those kind of decisions working down that decision tree as necessary. And then once you've done that, if you can explain your justification, yes, they're not always going to agree. And I know that. I've seen it. You've, and very compelling parents coming up and having their own use, their own children and the challenges they go through. But if you're able to explain it and provide a logical reason for it, um, nine times out of ten in my experience, people will understand. And it sets a boundary by which they can operate. Thank you. This is Alvarado. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I noticed in your opening statement that you said that um, it was good to see the override money used in alignment with what was requested. Um, I'm curious if you supported the override and what your thoughts more broadly are on the fin current financial situation of the schools. Um, I did support the override. I was a yes but voter at the time. Um, yes, we do need it. I was convinced at the time. But I wanted to make sure that we were very careful about how we managed it. Um, because, and I think we've it, even at the time, you all were very clear that this is not a seven-year fix. This is a three- or four-year fix, as it was. Um, so if that's the case, you know, is there a way we can spread that? Uh, we know we have debt exclusions coming to the end from RMHS and the library, but we also know that Killam is just something waiting out there in the end from a debt exclusion perspective, unless we can think of other ways to handle things. Um, so part of that conversation is a joint with this group, but also with FinCom about what our best way forward is. Uh, we would be looking, frankly, to the select board to make sure the revenue is improving, because that is a fundamental underwriting driver. We do have an issue in what, from a you know, contractual perspective and that 82% of our budget is teacher money, essentially. And that is locked in at more than the 2.5%. So we're already building up a debt to a degree in terms of what we can afford, can afford over the long run. So um, part of what I want to look at is making sure that we are doing everything we can. Um, while we have, for lack of a better way, flush, we're not flush, but while we are positive, for lack of a better term, let's make the strategic investments that we need to make so that three or four years down the road, we're not having to go buy something new that would be a budget buster, for lack of a better way to put it. Um, and whatever we buy, make sure it can last to the point it needs to last. Um, I don't know if that fully answered your question, Ms. Alvarado, but hopefully it did. Thank you. Yeah. Dr. Doxer. Um, thank you for both applying for this and for the long-term seat. Um, right now it takes a huge commitment to even run, so thank you very much. Um, my question is going to be similar to what I've been asking, but I'm going to add a caveat because um, I understand what you're saying about mathematical, logical decision trees. And one of the difficult things about education is that our subjects, our children, are not easily widgetized. Mm -hmm. They're not widgets. They're living human beings with lots of um, idiosyncratic needs and demands. Um, and so you will be walking into a budget discussion that we've already passed a discussion, we've already passed a budget, um, the school committee has. Um, and so I'm wondering how you will feel and, and how you will represent the school committee that you're entering into in those budget discussions and how you will grapple with the multidimensional aspects of the students that we're trying to address their needs of including the special needs and reg ed and the whole picture, full day kindergarten space, the whole thing. Yep. Um, so I guess the, the, first an the first part of that answer is relatively straightforward. It was voted unanimously, five to nothing. It is what it is in that regard. Um, and at the time, I was not a sitting member, but I can now sit there and say, this is what the committee voted for, and that is what it is. Um, the second part of the question is, is far more uh, deep than that, I guess, for lack of a better way to say it. Um, and there's no easy answer. I'm not pretending that there is an easy answer. Um, yes, they're not widgets. Um, but um, 
what we need to make sure of is that we provide the right opportunities for the constraints that we have. We have to recognize and put the constraints out that we have. And when we, this group probably collectively decides that we want to change the constraints, then we make the, the, the argument to the electorate, for lack of a better way to say it, that this is what we want to change the constraints for and this is why. And we have a very firm, detailed understanding for it. Um, there's a perception, and I don't know that it's fair necessarily, but there's a perception that we don't necessarily understand all of why some of the money is driving the way it is. I think there's a very clear answer in the budget book about the, the teachers and where they're going. I think there are some places in the budget book, and I think the words were here and spoken probably 20 times in the first two days of placeholders, 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 that we're probably going to need to provide more information for to the public in the long run um, as a point of note, right? And I think what also probably should come forward is that the school committee and the superintendent have a habit of um, take, putting the budget as it is, but then returning money at the end of the year, 500000 400000 whatever, back to FinCom, back to free cash. And that needs to be more well understood, for lack of a better way to say it, by the community as well. Um, one of the things, and again, I don't know whether this is legal, and so it's a conversation to do with FinCom. One of the things I'd like to see is whether or not we can set up a a reserve account, for lack of a better way, from the school perspective, to say, we'll show you we're good stewards of our money, we'll put it in this reserve account so that we can use it for something else, whether it's full day kindergarten, whether it's, you know, reducing the, the debt on buying a new or rebuilding a new building, something else along those lines. I'm not an expert in, that, in the in municipal finance law, so I'm not going to proclaim I am, but that's just another potential way to look at some of those things. Can we give money back to get money in the future? Can we make an investment in savings to, make, to use that money with some growth of 3% or whatever over a year to, to, pay back, to pay down something in the future? I don't know. I'm just throwing some ideas out that might, might be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Friedman. Yes. Thanks for applying um, and thanks for running. I guess I changed my question up based on something you mentioned about the teachers in your opening statement. And um, what is your take on uh, if the two, if the salary increase for the teachers was justified, um, and or or if it wasn't just justified, and why? The teachers are the direct line for our children, um, and I'm a believer in for lack of a better way to say, pay for performance. But with union contracts, it's very hard to do that. Um, I know we have many long-standing, excellent teachers that more than deserved that. Um, it's very hard from a municipal perspective, though, when you have a fixed budget of 2.5%, and that is what it is, and you're not going to go above that unless you do something extraordinary. Um, but I would also say I would have liked to see potentially a few more, for lack of a better way to say it, clawbacks into the, into the contract. Um, you know, incentives for doing more. Uh, you know, they have the, um, I forget what the word is called, but when, when a teacher goes and, and does, teaches music on the side, they get a stipend. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. Um, I would like to also see that if a teacher has some disciplinary record for a period of time, that something happens as a result of that. Um, all, many of our teachers are excellent. There are a few that are not, and there should be consequences. Thank you. Um, and Mrs. Webb. Yes. Uh, so your statement answered my question about motivation for public education, so I think I'm all set. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to make any conclusion? The only conclusion is we, I thank you for the time here tonight. Um, I appreciate all of your willingness to come out on an extra night in many cases um, to sit and fill the position. And I hope if you select me that I can serve in, in a fashion that you would be appreciative of. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So at this point, uh, unless there's any further discussion, we would go to a uh, roll call vote of each candidate. Um, because there are 10 members, um, there would be six would be required for a candidate to 
fill the vacancy. And you would not, you would only be able to vote in the affirmative for one of the three candidates. Mr. Berman has a question on the yeah. process. I, I just, uh, having this now been the third time involved in this, you all it's, it's, it's actually been five. <laughs> I, I think it might be maybe a richer discussion if rather than, uh, what I would suggest is maybe we put all three names in nomination um, and then we have a conversation. And then at that point, it, it may be a candidate emerges. And I, I just think it's, I'd like to, rather than just raise my hand for one or the, I, I'd like to Mr. Berman, hear what I, other people No, I, I, no, I, all three names do go forward for nomination. Right. Okay. It's, to, we, Dr. Darty and I, and actually, um, Friedman discussed that we would take the vote in um, basically alphabetical order, which also happens to be the order in which all the candidates submitted their um, nominations. So I think, and you, we allocated really the, um, we're sort of at that allocation. I think if there's a question to ask, um, you can, at, we could ask, that we could entertain if there's any additional questions. But I think at this point we move to the I, vote. I guess, Mr. Chairs, Madam Chair, whoever is uh, providing, uh, yeah. presiding here. Um, I'd like to know not only who my colleagues and, and, and school committee people are voting for, but I want to know why. Because maybe that might change my mind about who I might vote for. So right. that's I, Mr. Bobbin. I'm with Barry. Um, I am really interested and, and have in the past benefited from my colleagues on the school committee sharing our views and open public deliberation. I found that very helpful. So to the extent the format permits uh, can, you know, our, our combined boards to share any comments or impressions they may choose to share, I would welcome that before I have to make a selection. So I, I think we, we are on a time frame. The select board also have a, a meeting and I think this is a very, um, as a, I have also participated in this process, and so I know how uncomfortable it is to sit there and um, hear this. But um, I would allow if anyone would like to make a comment on where their thinking is, but I'm going to ask you to just make a brief comment about it so that members can can listen. Um, and it, if uh, so, if anybody would like to make a comment on their sort of current thinking, do you Barry want to make a comment? <laughs> I have a question and a comment. Yeah. Um, first, I just asked you questions per um, Chair Webb's in instructions, um, but I would like to, again, thank you for coming forward. You all have excellent resumes, uh, obviously, and bring different skills to the, to the board. The question that, that I have, um, is this appointment is for the next seven weeks or so? Yes, one school committee meeting on March 28th, yeah. and technically we have a meeting with the financial committee on February 27th, committee and committee. we're posted for that meeting, and that is the meeting we present our budget. So um, is the your next meeting uh, the main topic what will the main topic of your next meeting be? We actually have some topics related to um, capital the, and... Is uh, it going to be a capital update? There will be two quarterly updates, one for personnel and one for finance. Uh, there will be most likely an update on NEASC, which is the high school. And um, if, depending upon and how the process... there will be an appointment of, hopefully, of a director of student services. Right. The school committee will... Thank you. We have some candidates. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else would like to share a comment or a thought? I guess I'll stick my neck out. Um, I really appreciate all of you applying. Um, I'm planning to vote for Mr. Corum because I think he's been a constant presence and a <coughs> um, positive catalyst for thought and discussion. And um, I think that he's up to speed. Um, and I would absolutely love if other people would stay involved. I hate campaigns because I hate shutting people out of positions they want to volunteer for. Um, 
I think that that does take time to get up to speed, and so I really relish when you are up to speed to participate. Um, and um, I, I say the same thing to you, Mr. Wise. Some of your answers about the open meeting law concern me because deliberation happens whether you're taking part in the conversation or you're listening to other members deliberate about the things that you have on the table. Um, and money at the end of the year is mandated returned um, because if it's within the special ed budget, like that 500,000 you were referring to, it has to go back. It can't get spent on something else. That's not to say there aren't good ideas in what you said, um, but my feeling is we have one meeting um, and the FinCom, and I think that Mr. Quorum is right up to speed with us, and so I'm sticking my neck out at the risk because I don't want to hurt your feelings, and I really appreciate your participating, but that is where my thinking is right now. So the select board is technically the appointing authority, and we're privileged to be here, but I would very much like to hear from the school committee members because this is going to affect all of you directly over the course of the next seven weeks. So while I have my opinion on the three candidates, and I thank you all for coming here, this ultimately affects, this is about the school committee. So we could just do a straight vote, but I feel, um, while I have the information from the three candidates, I, I don't have a lot to go on from the school committee itself. And, and frankly, it affects all of you. So not to put you all on the spot, but I'm gonna put you all on the spot. <laughs> Any other committee members who would like to share anything? Um, oh, or you she was to... asking oh, the school okay. committee oh, members, so um, Ms. Borowski. Um, I will try to be brief, because a lot of what I'm gonna say is echo what Dr. Doxer just said. Um, I am, this is not the first time, this is every time this happens, we're so lucky to have candidates of your quality applying for these positions. Like, so thank you very, very much for stepping up and applying for this vacancy, and in the case of Mr. Wise, pulling papers and running for a permanent seat. So I am very grateful to you, and I have an overwhelming desire to ask that you all find ways to continue to be engaged. Um, because like Dr. Doxer, I wish we had free seats. That being said, um, I'm inclined at this moment, there was something Mr. Quorum said that really resonated with me. You said, if I can help out for the next seven weeks, I'm willing to. And that's sort of the position, that's what this is, right? Um, the law says we have to fill the vacancy, we have to fill the vacancy. It's one, maybe two meetings and you do have your background as a budget parent and your engagement with the schools for many years, you really are in a good position, <coughs> I think, to do that. Um, so that's where I'm leaning at this moment. Mr. Robinson and then Mr. Bobbin. So uh, obviously a, a, a challenging uh, year for me, obviously being up for re-election re and, and doing this, but uh, yeah, I'll just be very, pointed and blunt, the way I've always done this is, and we've done a few of these, is, is and I've, uh, I have pre I think everybody's great. I wish, you know, there was, we had a bigger committee, but I think that by virtue of the fact that, that Mr. Wise took out papers, uh, we should uh, uh, respect that and, and allow him to be for the appointment. Ms. Bobbin. So I'll bring another perspective to the table. Um, just for my impressions, uh, just very quickly. So M Mr. Coram, thank you. It's, it, you're, it's been a tremendous amount of time with us at school committee meetings. You make tremendous points when you've chosen to speak publicly. And I, I, there's no doubt in my mind that you are certainly up to speed on, on all of the storylines and, and, and issues the committee uh, has. And you've demonstrated mastery of those issues in your public comments. I've always been very impressed. Mr. Wise, I want to thank you for taking the plunge and um, formally declaring a candidacy for a position in the committee. This committee needs, um, you know, the participation of the public, and, and you've um, chosen to extend your commitment to your community. Um, you know, I noticed you spent a lot of time with the Joshua Eaton Task Force, and I think that, that experience, as well as some of your others, would, would be very helpful. So I think we're in the fortunate position that, that I think uh, all of our candidates have really important experience, but it's, it's Miss uh, Healy's um, 
experience that really has my attention for the issues that this committee faces in its one remaining uh, meeting. We have a very important uh, appointment uh, of a head of, I believe it's student services, is that the formal title of the position? Um, it's very important for special ed, which is a, an area we've spent a lot of time as a committee. Um, from the budget perspective, it's, a, it's our highest growth cost center. Um, there's a lot of challenges in that area. I think having, having Ms. Healy as, as part of our discussions, uh, asking questions, bringing her perspective as 10 years as a principal uh, and assistant superintendent. She's literally been uh, on the um, administrative side of a lot of the challenges we face. I know not in Reading, but I welcome that outside perspective because for me, it would be really valuable to see someone um, help, help us get some, some fresh thought and fresh ideas perhaps. So um, I think for the particular issues we have in the next month, she would right now be the person I'm favoring, but I'm open to listen to perspectives <laughs> and I may change my mind after I hear others speak, but that's where I am right now. I'll just comment that um, in preparing for this process after Mrs. Van Den Eker's uh, resignation, I had a lot of conversation with, we're <coughs> fortunate to have in the Massachusetts Association of School Committees, field directors that we can rely on um, as resources to us. And uh, one of the issues that um, she, she brought and discussed and said that often it, is, it becomes an issue for school <coughs> committee members, I mean school committees um, in advance of election, um, to have a candidate who's also running for election uh, put on the board. And I understand, Mr. Wise, you um, would have no, ap no intention of grandstanding and would, would not do that, but the sheer um, ability to be on the board and obtain that um, advantage over, there's another candidate in the race. There are three, three uh, candidates for the three-year position. Um, uh, and in fact, many com committee members or many committees or select boards um, would choose not to appoint this close to an election. So um, from that perspective, I really um, appreciate everyone participating. I think Mr. Corm and uh, Ms. Healy are outstanding candidates and, and people have spoken already, Dr. Doxa, Mr. Bava, and Ms. Borowski about um, the attributes that they would bring to this board in the short period of time. And so I would be, I'm leaning in the direction of um, Mr. Corm or Mrs. Healy, and when we take our vote is when I, we need to decide. So the way that the vote works, we vote, um, the first candidate we'll take a vote on is Mr. Uh, Corum. And um, Dr. Hardy, if, the, if there are six votes, then I believe we are completed with the voting. Right. If there's not six votes, then we vote all three candidates, and then we bring it, this is I think what happened when Last time, um, we bring it down to, and then it's sort of you vote the top two candidates um, until you get one candidate that has six votes. So um, I'm going to um, leave to that. Did Barry have a question? Yeah, I'll oh. go ahead. If you guys, I know we, you wanted to hear the committee members weigh in, but if any yeah. other um, select board members have a comment. Right. Right here. Yes. So um, I actually, um, in agreement with the direction, Mrs. Webb, that you were going, um, I, this is now the third process I've been involved in. The first two, um, when, um, Nick, when we appointed you, and then also when we appointed Sherry the year later, mm -hmm. that was late fall um, <coughs> in override years, and the budget was just coming to the committee. Um, the committee was going to be extremely shorthanded. Um, it made sense to make that appo those appointments then because um, the committee really needed that, that, that extra pair of hands. Um, we're now six weeks away, seven, six and a half weeks away from an election. Um, the budget is already going to be out of the committee by the time whoever we appoint will be sitting down. And I'm also very, very um, reticent to appoint somebody who is also going to be on the ballot. All of us here um, are sitting in these seats by, by the fact that we've actually faced the voters, um, some of us more than once, um, and basically they gave us the authority to be here. Now, if Mr. Parks, um, who I understand you're the only two-year person, if he had applied, I would do that because he would be the de facto, nom you know, de facto um, <coughs> committee member for this particular seat. But the fact that Mr. Wise is running, and then I think there's another, maybe one or two more other people, I'm not sure, that really does give an unfair advantage. Um, and I don't think that it's really up to 10 people to decide um, who is going to sit on that board. It's, it's going to be up to the voters. So um, I I'm actually going to lean toward uh, appointing one of the two um, folks who um, have graciously raised their hands uh, to serve, not, and, and I want to be make particularly clear, 
not as a repudiation of anything that Mr. Wise believes in or says. I think if he goes in front of the voters and the voters say yes, I'd be, well, you know, he'll, be, he'll be a colleague and somebody that I'm sure will make a really good contribution to the committee. But I think that even though your name would not appear on the ballot at saying incumbent, campaign literature and everything else would be say I was appointed. And I just don't think that that's a fair thing for 10 people to, um, to make that decision. So um, I'm going to I'm going to go in the direction of either Mr. Quorum or Ms. Healy. Um, but again, only because I don't think that this group of 10 really should be in the business of appointing somebody so close to the election. So that's my thought. Any other comments? Hi. Yeah. No, just anything else. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I have to take some exception to the rationale that has just been presented by three of the members. Uh, Every single one of these folks here had the opportunity to take out papers. One chose to do so, two didn't, and I'm not making judgments about why they did or didn't, I'm just stating a fact that they did. Similarly, uh, uh, well, one candidate is already on this board, but uh, the two that are running uh, could have all come forward, and I believe uh, Ms. Callie did not choose to present her uh, credentials here. Uh, if you think about what's going to have to happen in the next few weeks, uh, the winner will be sitting with the, the, the superintendent and getting a training session. It would be a shame to see that training kind of used for six, seven weeks, and I realize they'll stay involved, and then poof, uh, that candidate disappears. Uh, listen, Mr. Wise will be attending probably two meetings, or whoever wins. I'm going to vote for Mr. Wise. You can try before you buy. If you don't like what you see, if you see grandstanding, in either of those meetings, then don't vote for them. If you like what you see, you can. But I want to stress, every one of these candidates, and it's not a dirty process. Elections are how we get here, Linda. Seriously. I, I, dirty. I, I, I don't know what you said, but it kind of threw me the wrong way there. That, it's the mother's milk of democracy, please. Uh, Mr. Ensminger, oh, yes. let's yes. not do that. Okay. All right. Fine. I've said what I've said. Thank you. There's no um, further comment. I don't want to rebut anything. No, no, no. I, I don't want to rebut that. I, I, I just want to say how difficult it is to choose between um, someone who, who has got pro professional cr credentials in this area and someone who's been a budgetarian and, and, and very familiar with the budget and has gone to many of the meetings and participated. That's a challenge for me. And uh, the other school committee members didn't help me uh, answer it. So, <laughs> um, John. Mr. Bobbin, and then oh, sorry, Mr. Halsey first. Mm -hmm. um, I, has everybody else had a chance to speak? Yes, uh, at least once. Yep. Um, so um, this probably won't be a big surprise to anybody, but I come from a little more. I come from an absolute practical standpoint, um, and that has. At this moment, I look at the credentials of the three people involved. Any one of these three people would be an exceptional candidate to fill this spot. I, I'm convinced of that, um, particularly having had a chance to hear them speak about their interest in doing so. So for me, um, this is not about choosing a person. It's about choosing a process. We made a decision um, recently at a board of selectmen's meeting, a board of uh, select, select board. board. Yeah, I got to get the, my terminology correct. Sorry. Um, so we made a decision um, based on some advice and reading of the law that said we shall do this. So we decided that shall do this means that we're here tonight. Um, there were some members um, of our of our board who didn't think it was a great idea that thought it might be a waste of time for such a short period of time. There, we had the implication that um, from the school committee that some thought it was a good idea, others thought it was, you know, again, such a short window of time that it might not be practical. But we're here. Um, so back to the practical side. Um, we have two people who could come, add value, and then, um, be sideline players at best, and we hope they will be. Um, either one of them, you know, somebody here is going to get picked, I think, um, although 
you start to look at it, you begin to wonder if there's going to be six votes in any direction, um, which is an interesting thought. Um, what I see is the following. Um, I see that Tom Wise raised a couple of things that, you know, caused fair concern. And that would be normal for a person who is thinking about joining, uh, you know, trying to join a board but is not experienced yet. And so learning is probably one of the most important things that a person can do when they have the opportunity going forward. The last three, uh, th the last two um, that we have appointed are people that in one case, Nick, you, you said, I asked you the direct question, would you run? It was the fall and you said, I don't know. You made a decision based on what happened you know, in the ensuing time to, to run. Um, Sherry had made a decision to run. Um, and so, you know, it's not without precedence that we <coughs> have appointed people who are, who have clearly stated either, either by their papers being pulled or by, mm -hmm. in, in, you know, indication in Sherry's case that she would run. So I kind of discount that, you know, that argument that there's some opportunity, some extra opportunity. Um, here's what I know. I know that Tom Wise has a two out of three chance of being one of your colleagues. There are three people running for three year seats and two of them will be elected. So there's a two out of three chance that the man sitting in this room will have the job. And I would say from a practical standpoint, the opportunity to be able to sit, listen, observe, participate where appropriate would be extremely valuable to a person that has a two out of three chance of being elected. Valuable not so much to that person, but valuable to the committee. I also think, and I do agree that if this somehow turned into a platform for Mr. Wise, the voters would make a clear decision as to how they would view that. That's gonna be, if he's chosen, that would be the decision he'd have to make. But my feeling is that we have an opportunity to appoint a person who has a two out of three chance of being one of your colleagues. You have the opportunity to teach, to instruct, train, and get a person on the ramp. Based on that, my decision would be that I would support Tom Wise. Did you want to add anything, Mr. Bobbin, or are you all set? Uh, just one final comment. Just something Barry said in passing, but I want to just pick up. Barry, I think you said this, and if this is what you said, I agree with it, um, that the person who is appointed, if it were Mr. Wise, is not going to run as an incumbent. And that was when I was appointed, and then I was on the ballot. I was not right. the incumbent. Um, it's just alphabetical, right? So there's no kind of advantage in ballot placement or elsewise from, from being. That actually it, lower on the ballot. You're the alphabetical, right? Possible. I think Anderson was before Boyvin when I ran, right? So I was second. Uh, so they're just, or, or do we agree, is that the point you made? I want to make sure we. No, I mean, that's a, that's a, that, that's a fact. It's that it, it, it the <coughs> person won't be listed as an incumbent, but can use his time on the board as, as, a, as a campaign piece. And then. My final point was just, the, for me, it's, it's more a question of, give, given the, the very limited opportunity of this appointment to serve with this, with our, our school committee, uh, for me, it's a very targeted, very narrow question of, for the agenda items that are before our committee, what experience I've best adds perspective to the board that I'm serving on um, in the next meeting or a couple meetings? Uh, and that's how my comments are directed. So I'm not thinking beyond that. The voters will make their choice, and that's a separate process. But I, I'm not comfortable bringing you know, election considerations into this discussion personally. I don't think that is appropriate. Thanks. Ms. Alvarado. Thank you. Um, so the election considerations, I think, are a reality. That's the, just where we are in the calendar. Um, as I see it, we have three candidates. Two of them um, have demonstrated either an in-depth knowledge of education by an entire professional career 
for several years of dedication involved in the school system. Um, there were two comments that Mr. Wise made that left me concerned as far as his understanding of the functioning of the school committee. Um, one is in regards to the open meeting law, and the second is in regard into the budget and why funds are returned. Um, so we have no way of knowing what will happen in April. Um, and so to Nick's point of what's going to happen in the next seven weeks, we have three candidates, only one of whom may continue but may not. And so in that seven weeks, which of the three is the one who's going to most be able to contribute immediately to the school committee in that time? And then whatever happens in April is obviously beyond all of our purview. Um, for that reason alone, I would be inclined to support Mr. Quorum. There's no further discussion. I'd like to um, ask Dr. Darty to help us move through the voting, the roll, which is roll call. Sure. So we're going to have one candidate at a time, and then I will ask each uh, board or committee member to uh, say yay, yes or no in terms of for that candidate. You can only vote uh, for one candidate out of the three in the affirmative. So the, we'll go again. We'll go in alphabetical order. So can I ask uh, you? Jeffrey, oh, oh. just if there's a, not if someone doesn't get six votes, how does that work? Uh, if someone doesn't get six votes, then we'll go back. To, we'll we'll to, go to, to two, all three, or the two top, top vote. The two top vote getters. Sorry, I should have said that if I didn't. And Caitlin is recording this. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm just going to go right in order because it's yeah. alternating. Do you need a motion? <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you need a motion? Uh, a motion, yes. To put all three. To put all to put all three on the. Could yes. I, could I be recognized to so move uh, that the names of Jeffrey Coram, uh, Coram, I'm sorry, Jeff, uh, Gina Healy, and Thomas Wise be placed into nomination? I need a second. second. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Yeah. Mr. Friedman seconded. Mr. Friedman seconded. Okay. Mr. Boavin. So we each say we're one doing name. a roll call vote for Jeffrey with Corn one first. Or is this for Jeffrey Corn for Jeff? Uh, no. Mr. Ensminger? No. Mr. Robinson? No. Mrs. Yes. Alvarado? Yes. Yes. Mrs. yes. yes. Dr. Doxer? Mr. Freeman? Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Webb? Yes. Mr. Berman? Yes. Ms. Borowski? Yes. And Mr. Halsey? No. That's it. Six. That's six. Okay. Is that what was the final vote? Could we announce six in the, the rest. No. All right. I want to thank all of the candidates, and I know Dr. Doxer said this, but I'm just going to emphasize it that we really encourage you to stay involved. I think um, you all have a variety of things to bring to to the schools, um, to the town, and really encourage you to really continue that process. And um, so all our business I am going to adjourn this um, joint school committee select board meeting I need a motion to adjourn, to adjourn. Ms. Sprowski moved to adjourn Second. seconded by Mr. Berman and we're adjourned thank you we we oh, did. We did. I, did we did. I did this the other night can we vote to adjourn <laughs> the vote to adjourn yes <laughs> We're voting to adjourn. Did, 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 is that unanimous or are we not? Uh, do we have some no's? I think you got to do them. There's, there's two boards here. They don't yeah. vote together. Oh, okay. We're staying so, on. I, I, just to We're say, you know, stay. just to. Sorry. We have to go exactly All right. Yeah. Let me start over. I'm going to, we're going to end the joint meeting and I'm going to adjourn the school. I would like the school committee to adjourn. I move to adjourn. We need a second from the. Okay. Second. A second. Mr. Bob and second. Sorry. And I'm going to we're going to vote to adjourn the school committee. All those in favor? Okay, there we go. Now unanimously the school committee is adjourned. Sorry, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the school we'll committee. We'll talk. Select board has more business. The select board um, may I take a motion to go into an executive yeah. session? Get my, get myself on the you need yeah. you need a full yeah. motion with the reason for going yeah. into the executive session. Vanessa, have that? Yes, yeah. Uh, hey, Caitlin, do I have a motion? Um, Caitlin. Friedman, um, Elena, Return into Barry Berman. Right. Uh, let's see if I can wing this. Um, move the select board. Uh, 
adjourn to executive session to discuss a real estate transaction um, with the intention of returning once that executive session is closed. Strategy with respect to real estate. Real estate. Is that real estate yeah. You should really get this right. I got the motion, huh? Thank you. Oh, get okay. right. <laughs> Where did John go? What happened to my bo the board? The board. What? <laughs> All right. Yeah, we need. All right. Move to go into executive session to discuss interest in real estate, where the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the body, and to reconvene in open session. Approximately. At a, approximately mm -hmm. one hour from uh, approximately 8:30. Okay. Very good. Second. Um, you need to do just, a roll call, just, Andy. Just, uh, Barry. Where's Berman? Barry. Jesus, get in the vote, will you? John. You got to vote. We have to vote. Go. Who are we missing? Where's Halsey? John. Halsey, where the hell are you? <laughs> we can do a roll call. Uh, we have to wait for John. We have to wait for John. Oh, could could you get him? Can, 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 could somebody? <laughs> might be no, he's, he's get a out. 20 on Halsey, please. <laughs> yeah. What? Okay, Vanessa. I'm afraid sure we're going to have to take we, a we, we can do it five minutes. We can do it without him? Yeah, four is enough to go into executive session. Okay, all right. I didn't know if every member had to be here no. to, for a roll call. All right, thank you. A quorum. So, uh, any discussion on the, mo on the motion? Yeah. All right, roll um, call. Hearing roll none, call. roll call. Roll call. Um, Mr. Ensminger? Yes. Yes. Ms. Alvarado? Uh, Yes. Mr. Berman? Yes. Uh, Mr. Friedman, yes. So, um... The session is in that room over there. Bob's waiting for us. Okay. Great. Thank you. Let's go. Very good. And we are to return, correct? Yes. 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 We said that in the motion. Yeah, we said yep. that? Okay. Uh, 2019 is now back in session. Uh, I will turn the, the agenda item, the single agenda item over to uh, the town manager. Okay, thank you. Um, on the screen, um, it's, it's very similar, except for one article. It's identical to what we've handed you. When we get there, we'll explain it to you. I'll just go quickly. If anyone has any questions, some of this is boilerplate. Please let me know, and I'll stop. Uh, first article is the annual election. The next few articles are dictated by, by charter. Uh, the first is reports. The second is instructional motions. Those are articles two and three. Article four is the capital plan. And that's where the charter stops in terms of what it m requires uh, to be on. Um, the next articles are Article 5 is to um, amend the current year's budget, which we do absolutely expect uh, some activity there. <clears throat> Article 6 is if we have any unpaid bills. We just soon leave that on the warrant, even though that we do not know of any, if any come up. It would be helpful for the business to be uh, disposed of at April town meeting. <clears throat> Article 7 is to dispose of surplus property. We do know we do have some surplus property uh, to be disposed. Um, Article 8 is something that the bylaw committee and Matt worked on. I'll uh, give you a little bit of background. Mm -hmm. The bylaw committee has voted to remove um, section 6.2 from the general bylaw which deals with surplus and that's what they want town meeting to agree to um, however they have and, and you can see in the language they are not interested in deleting that section if the select board has not adopted a written set of policies that would replace it mm -hmm. those written policies have already been written uh, Allison and Matt will be in to see you in March um, I believe March 26th so that would be a month ahead of town meeting. It so should be Mr. fine. Chairman? Yes. So this would uh, obviate the need to have a question to sell surplus <coughs> property at, on the town meeting warrant, and instead the select board would have its own discretion by a policies to dispose um, of said property? I don't know about that. Does it matter on the dollar amount, Ray? Does oh, yeah. yeah, below a certain level, I think. Uh, it will matter on the, on the dollar amount. If it's 25000 I think we still have to go to town meeting. Right. Yeah. And most of it isn't, but okay. So and as it is now, the bylaw allows us to go to ta uh, go to FinCom for smaller amounts. But honestly, I very rarely do. So, Mr. Chair, 
So that would mean that yes. you know, as it com as it comes up, we can dispose of it in meetings as opposed to one fell yeah, swoop at town right. meeting. And that will be very helpful because sometimes there's a quick turnaround needed to dispose of things yeah, that we hadn't anticipated. Right. For a town yeah. meeting, anyway. Right. Okay. okay. Thanks, Bob. Um, article nine is the annual article to um, take some money that's been allocated in the budget for OPEB and actually put it into the uh, OPEB fund. And there will be uh, funds available for that. Um, Article 10 is where it's different uh, in this version than is in your printed warrant. I'll describe the general circumstance, and, and town council is likely to be able to answer some questions more exactly. Um, there was the DOR anticipated that as of late fall, perhaps December, that this problem would be solved legislatively, but it was not. So now it is up to cities and towns. Um, to take care of this issue. What is the and problem? The, and the issue is, yeah. um, if you recall, we get somewhere between five hundred and six hundred thousand dollars a year from the rate from the cable ratepayers that we pass along to RCTV with a contract. Um, town meeting never sees that. It does pass through the general fund, but town meeting is not aware of it and has no reason to see it. The DOR has ruled that since it passes through the general fund, town meeting ought to have a role. Oh, okay. So um, this article alone would simply set up a revolving fund, much like water, sewer, and storm water, to receive such monies and then to spend such money. So this has nothing to do with that proposed uh, rulemaking that we talked Correct. about, which Correct. might take away. This is just a set up a vehicle that would allow this to happen much more transparently for town sure. meeting. And then just parenthetically, as part of the town manager's budget, I learned today that I have to actually put this into the budget. So that's kind of a new twist. It'll be water, sewer, storm water, and then whatever we call this. Uh, um, and it, and I'll, I'll just finish by saying this is all very new. Um, I'll say the DOR's guidance has been a little volatile. Again, they expected this to be solved by a different way in December. And the law is it has to be addressed by next July. So all of a sudden this spring, there's a rush to figure out how to do it. And council has uh, done a lot of research, and there's a couple of different options. And this is clearly the one that the town accountant and town council agree with. I think at town meeting, this, this article will be OK to explain. I think the budget part might be tricky, because they have never seen the budget for RCTV. Honestly, I have very rarely seen a budget for RCTV. So that's <laughs> going to be a whole new discussion. Um, is there anything you think you should add, Ray? So the reason that uh, that we chose to do an enterprise fund is um, an enterprise fund, you can appropriate the money even though it isn't there yet but because based on the anticipated revenues that are mm -hmm. coming in. And um, <coughs> the, uh, if you, you had a, um, a, a more traditional revolving fund, you'd have to wait for the money to be there before you could, right. because before it could be spent, and that's um, uh, essentially would be a uh, uh, a few months delay anyway. Yeah. And, um, so an enterprise fund, it's the same mechanism that you already use for um, uh, water, sewer, and stormwater. You appropriate the money based on your anticipated revenues for the upcoming year. So, Mr. Chair. So, so right yes. now, sorry. Right now. Um, we get money from Comcast and, and Verizon. How does that money then, um, does it go directly to RCTV or does it go, it comes to us and then we allocate to RCTV? Yeah, uh, what, what technically happens is an email comes to me, I send it to Caitlin, she sends it to Sharon. Um, and then a check comes into Caitlin, she gives it to Sharon. <coughs> Sharon then takes that money and gives it, if you will, or sends it to RCTV. So it passes through the town's hands. And that was intentional by um, my predecessor, Peter, did not want it to go directly to RCTV. He wanted this to have an ability and this contractual language <coughs> by which if they're not acting up to speed, we don't have to give it to them mm -hmm. with certain terms and conditions. So this is and not going to change that um, flow No, of but process. as Dan knows, and the rest of you may not, um, RCTV's contract expired and I granted him extension. So I just want to be careful in saying that we're currently in negotiations with RCTV to come up with a new agreement. To, just to be our provider? Excuse me? To, to be our provider? Yes. Or, okay. Yes. That's separate from the cable. Right. The cable just basically it's a, right. it comes. To give us money so that we can. Allocate it. Allocate it. Right. 
um, our deal with them needs to be, you know, at arm's length from that. Right. So, so what's, I mean, I, I didn't know that. So what's the process with that um, e contract extension? And, and um, we're in negotiations with a deadline. Yep. And we're, I just want to be careful. <coughs> That's not on the agenda. I understand, yeah, right. but I didn't, I didn't. Right. At some point, Dan? can we get a, a, yeah. an update? A little, right. little bit, a little bit off the topic, but related to the topic. Uh -huh. uh, the proposed uh, FCC rulemaking, bar, uh, Ray, are you familiar with what they were proposing down there to essentially not allow the cost of the PEG to be passed through the ratepayers? That was a proposed rule before, and we sent an objection in. Does anybody know if that rule was actually adopted or rejected? Or I've not, I've not heard, Dan. I've not heard. That, that might have some bearing on. I think it was a springtime decision. April, so I think it was an April May kind of decision. Oh, it's not. The cutoff for yet. comments okay. was like January. Yeah, so it's not been made yet. No, okay, I don't think so. so we need to stay on top of that. Okay. That could have big implications. All right, the next article is purely cosmetic. It's the Inspection Revolving Fund that already exists. We're just changing the name of the project from Reading Village to the yeah. Metropolitan at Reading Station, which is what they call it now. So no more, no less. <laughs> Article 11 is the uh, more traditional uh, set of revolving funds. Mm -hmm. Article 13 is the uh, Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Article 14, let me just find it here. Um, you might not have heard about this yet, but um, in discussing with our mutual technology staffs, um, as you might guess, three-year contracts are very common in municipal finance. You have to go to town <coughs> meeting to get longer than a three-year. So economically, usually, there's much better deals if you can do a four, five, or six year, because that means you've gone to the trouble of getting permission. Well, in this one, we found uh, something on both sides for the town and the school for backup uh, technology that um, we would like to have the ability to go beyond three years as a contract, um, as long as six years. Um, it could be advantageous. If, if you recall, it was either one or two years ago, I think it was a year ago, the schools asked to do this for curriculum. Uh, they got a five-year permission and it, you know sort of don't want to ask town meeting but when the deal is so good that the three-year is is five hundred dollars and the five-year is five hundred and twenty dollars you go okay I'm gonna ask permission so that's what we face in this issue and we both just want permission to um, go beyond the three years and John and I will make a presentation on that <coughs> um, then we get into some of the capital projects Article 15 is to um, authorize debt for Turf 2. Uh, the board in my goal is update saw an update on some of these capital projects, which, you know, since we were canceled last night, we haven't discussed. Bob, I have a question mm -hmm. regarding uh, 15. Well, actually, more broadly, not necessarily specific to 15. So, uh, uh, we've been talking about the capital plan and where turf two, field, the, uh, turf 2 fits into it. Um, and we received an email from a resident talking about closing the warrant and how the lights for Birch Meadow tie into turf 2. So what further conversation, because FinCom obviously still needs to approve the budget, which will include the capital plan. So how, is there a possibility for us to change any of this after today or is this final no this is it you can always call a special town meeting within the annual town meeting if you have different business to accomplish but this is what you're being requested to do okay so then so um, specifically to the question that came in today there is no request to authorize field lighting for birch meadow right. at this Anywhere. town meeting no i think the question that was being asked though was the uh, funds that had been previously allocated for Birch Meadow field lights, which is to the tune of about 1.5 million, why that Less wasn't being 1.4? There is there is was, no one million was uh, was authorized. 100,000 was spent. Right. Right. So that puts us at point nine. Then we stopped. I was I I'm saying this because I was the chair at the time, mm -hmm. and I recommended <coughs> we stop the project because it came in at a million four. Right. And we either had to significantly reduce which fields were covered mm -hmm. or we had to go in and spend more money given our 
financial situation at the time right. was my strong recommendation to Bob that we yep. just back away completely right. for a, another day. Okay. True, in yes. Point. But it, in, two, in um, November 2018 town meeting, an additional 500000 was added to be used for lighting of the five Birch Meadow fields. So given the scope of Turf 2, is there a reason why that now 1.4, because right, 100,000 Now spent, it's 1. So 4. now it's 1.4. Um, why that isn't being allocated towards Turf 2? I think your, that has become the your wording player. is allocated, but that's really not accurate. It's, it's, a, it's a placeholder in a capital plan. It's mm -hmm. no more, no less. Yeah. Town meeting has not allocated any funds at all, so it can't reallocate. No one has asked town meeting to fund uh, ter fi the field lighting in the other four fields. It's on the capital plan, and, and when I present a budget to FinCom, it'll remain in the capital <coughs> plan for a future year. But there's nothing being proposed now. Now, a year from now, and as a practical matter, next fall, this will be a very useful discussion because it's going to be on the front burner, not on the back burner. But right now, um, well, I'm not proposing any action other than turf two. But this 15 for that is, only is only the turf, right? It doesn't even Correct. mention lights, does it? Correct. It includes it's lights for turf two. It's just, just the field. It's not lights. No, it is it's lights turf at two. turf two. Article 15 includes lights. It's a full replacement of the field plus replacement of lights. Right. Because it has lights currently. So. But that wasn't your point, was it? Uh, <laughs> or, or, well, or, it's relevant, though. Yeah. So no, I, I know, but I think. You go ahead. Give me a sec. Yeah. Um, does so it say lights on 15? Did I, I, did I it get may a, not say did lights. Did I get a bad copy? But, well, correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, but lights is included. <coughs> because they are included when, a, when an article <laughs> is presented with an actual motion at town meeting, lights are anticipated, absolutely. Okay. For term <coughs> two. That's not what this two. article says. It says uh, improvements to the field. So lights would fall. All the cross incidental are related there, too. <coughs> so. <coughs> so where is this funding going to be appropriated from? <coughs> For Turf 2, mm -hmm. part of the town managers and then FinCom's uh, annual budget. <coughs> It'll come up under debt or capital or both. In other words, in, in other it, words, it's not business for tonight. Right, and, and <coughs> it's and yeah, it, it was in a in a um, capital plan, right? But it hasn't been a approved for spending. Yeah, the individual in question knows full well she has the complete ability to offer amendments to the capital plan on the floor. Right. Right. Okay. Mm. Thank you for the clarification. <coughs> um, article 16. Um, John and I met yes John Doherty and I met yesterday again to sort of hash out how to move forward. Yep. Um, this is the building security article for town and school buildings. Um, we think we're 99 percent sure, maybe 95 percent <coughs> sure that an executive session in April will be appropriate for the three elected boards and FinCom to attend to get an update on this. Um, for those of you that attended the only other executive session we had, um, you'll realize that you know, we shared a little more in executive session that you wouldn't open session, but not a lot. Um, with building security, the intention is not to ever share a lot with a lot of people, obviously. Um, but we do want to have authorization for this. Um, I've recently talked to our senator and gave him our time frame. Um, there is $4 million in a bond bill for this purpose. So a I believe we want to go full speed ahead with the authorization, but until we actually issue the debt and schedule the project, we have to have another discussion. Um, Senator Lewis said if you want to move ahead this summer, you will not have any funding from the state. If you want to wait another one or two years, you may or may not have funding oh, from the God. state. So that will be a different discussion for a different day, but the first step is to get authorization. Yes, Barry. So is there a dollar amount that's going to be asked for? I'm um, not in the warrant, but a motion right now would be made for four million. That's the on anticipated. On the floor town meeting? Or, or, or uh, it'll be part of the budget part, process. Part of the budget yeah, process. you'll see an art article in so the capital plan for four million. That'll be bond, not bonded then? Or do we it have will. To? It, well, my, right now my anticipation would be to ask for the authorization for four million and to borrow <laughs> it over ten years if approved. Subject to those other things I just said. That's under the levy limit. We're not you're looking Correct. for exclusion. Correct. 
And for instance, just as a hypothetical, if we think there's state funding or grant funding out there, we could plan to pay four million or some amount, but we could authorize a higher amount at town meeting and make it clear that if some other money comes in, we can <coughs> accept it. Because otherwise, if we just ask for four million, we right. can't accept any anything Sir, beyond that. I thought once we kind of go out with it, that's the number that we're stuck with, or, or do we have, no? Or, or if let's say more money comes in and we don't, let's say we authorize four million, we only have to borrow two because we found two somewhere else, that we then we go that. back and. Um, right, uh, undo the authorization. Deauthorize de it. Yes. Right. Okay. That's all correct, but if we authorize four million, but we have an opportunity to spend four and a half million and we find another half million, you'd <coughs> like to have the authorization for four and a half million. That's all. So we're going to go out with something higher than we think we need? Uh, right now it's four, but to be discussed. All right. Um, the next two articles are water capital. Um, you've, you're pretty well aware of the Auburn water tank, which is Article 17. And Article 18 is a much smaller <coughs> project, uh, water main project on Grove Street that's too large to pay it in one lump sum in an annual project, so we'll have to borrow. Okay. So all, this is, all these borrowings are within the levy? Well, 17 and 18 are within the water fund and part of the water budget. Uh, the other two are within the levy limit, yes. So there's no debt exclusions being Correct. proposed here. <clears throat> Article 19 is just to accept uh, about 600,000, most likely from chapter <coughs> 20, roadway assistance from the state. <coughs> Article 20 is the annual budget. Could I, could I go back to 19, Bob? Yeah. Um, you said something about rec <coughs> receiving money from the state under Article 19, but is that right? Mm -hmm. um, but the f the senten sentence, the first uh, the first sentence or the whole sentence, the start of it says to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds, borrow or otherwise provide some or sums of money for highway projects. Um, To me, that sounds like we're asking the town for money. That's a catch-all way to accept money in any way it can may come in. Okay. Um, if we were going to borrow it, we'd have to ask for a debt authorization, for instance. Okay. A lot of these funds are reimbursed anyway, aren't they? So okay. We, we this one is not, but some no. of them are. Okay. Yep. Uh, let's see. Thank you. Six hundred k is more than we got last year. It's about the same. It's not going to change much. One year we got nine hundred thousand, yeah, but it's mostly been six hundred. We spent it all. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, Article uh, 21 is to uh, acquire a parcel of land. Um, it's in Timberneck Swamp. I'm in touch with the owner uh, to be de determined um, further whether it's a gift or whether it's for sale. It's a parcel that I know conservation is very, very interested in the town acquiring. By using this process at town meeting and acquiring it for general purposes, um, we can then later transfer it to, to Conscom. Um, if the owner of the land should decide, and so far he has not, to gift it to Conscom, we can skip the town meeting process entirely. But so far he, he's not interested in gifting it to Conscom. Our Article 22 is Dr. to, Dr. oops, sorry, somewhere have a question? No. Article 22 is to issue an RFP to see if any land's available to suit the <coughs> needs of that purpose stated or the, the conditions stated. Article 23 is another unique parcel, if you will, um, near the Simons uh, hockey rink. Um, it's a small parcel uh, behind the baseball field <coughs> that we might like to acquire. <clears throat> Article 24, um, I'm no expert at, but this is the gender neutral uh, bylaw that uh, the bylaw committee has worked on. Matt's the expert, along with town council. Um, you can see this article is extensive. All the specific changes are listed that are this recommended. This is every reference the, to. This is their, the, rep, the bylaw committee has scrubbed bylaw. all bylaw. the bylaw, and this bylaw. is their suggestions. So um, I believe that the moderator will say the four corners of the article are what these words are. You, you know, just because you're touching a paragraph doesn't mean it's open for another discussion. It's just for this purpose to make it uh, gender neutral. Um, I think in the, in the closing of the warrant, 
it can go either way, but where the bylaw committee has voted on this, I think the bylaw committee should be the sponsor, just, just so you know. And in the next one, the same way. Yeah. Article 25 is, a, is another piece of work by the bylaw committee to just do some real simple cleanups. You can read them and see how simple they are. While they were reviewing the bylaw, they just basically found some typos. Yeah. Um, parenthetically, they're also working on their 10-year review of the bylaw. That's a different issue for another day, but they're engaged in that process. And uh, last but not least is uh, folks who haven't come to enough town meetings um, might get booted out by the last article. <coughs> It's a warrant um, consisting of 26 articles as presented. Okay. Anything else, Bob? That's it. Thank you. All right. Um, could Thanks. motion. Move that the board close the warrant for the 2019 annual town <coughs> meeting to be held on April 2nd, 2019, consisting of 26 articles as presented and amended. Second. Just a note that uh, the reason the date is April 2nd is that Article 1 is actually the election, which happens Correct. on April 2nd. The, the remainder are dealt with the town meeting starting April 22nd, just so you know. Thank you. Very second. D uh, yes. Discussion? Um, all in favor? All in favor? Is this another roll call vote? No. No? no. This is just this open sending session. these forward. We haven't voted as we on the as we may yeah. on individual. individual on some of this point was roll, it's not roll yeah. call. That's it's a not good point. Can I move to adjourn? Um, Actually, second. Yeah. Uh, second. Uh, second. Uh, no, Barry had a question. I had a question before. Um, so, in the event, you know, it, because we had to cancel our meeting last night, there were a number of agenda items. I'm yeah. assuming that we're 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 not going to have another meeting between now and the time that we're going yeah. to yeah. try to jam in. That, that's an excellent question. Stuff. Okay. So, so next week is school vacation, right. and and Bob and I and Dan happened. We were in a subcommittee meeting. and We discussed this and felt that it wasn't appropriate to ha hold a meeting when many people in town might be on vacation. Bob and I are working now to cram as much as possible into um, uh, the, the meeting after school vacation. Twenty six. Uh, yeah, the 26th, and we will do our best to get everything in there that, that we can. But we don't anticipate another meeting that's not on currently on the agenda to get in the things that we want to get in I, at, at this point. Uh, at this point, I can't promise because I, I Bob and I have to need have to go through the agenda. Um, but but that's my intent is okay. to. Um, okay. Thank you, all right. Motion so, to adjourn. Second. All in favor. All right. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Don't leave till you sign. Just please sign oh, yeah, up before right. you go.